the Joe Rogan experience. First of all, I think it's amazing that no one's talked to you into doing MMA. It's incredible. I've been close. <laughs> How close? But mostly the lady outside, my wife, Lauren. Really? Is the one that's talking me out of it. Really? Yeah, bro. Like, when I graduated from college in 2011, University of Nebraska, wrestling was still on the brink of, if it was in, in its infancy of marketing and branding and really making it a professional career. So MMA was the new kid on the block and it was growing and expanding. And we had a lot of our guys transitioning in, Henry Cejudo, Ben Askren, Daniel Cormier. And so I really thought about it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna wrestle in the Olympics in London 2012, win the gold, and then I'm gonna make the transition to MMA. I'll be 25 years old, I'll have plenty of time. And then I met Lauren. And she's oh. like, listen, you're doing well in the sport. Stay here. You're comfortable. It's just a different, it's a different sport, MMA in comparison to wrestling, but it's a good thing. It it is a different sport and it also has a lot more head trauma. And there's a lot of things to consider. One hundred percent. That's yeah. what I think about all the time. I, I, <laughs> listen, I think about going to MMA until I see a guy like Platinum Mike Perry get his whole thing split, <clears throat> nose yeah. crooked. I'm like, eh. I'm good. It's like in wrestling, you lose, you get taken down, pushed out, you know, you get pinned. In fighting, you lose, you get something broken, choked out, tap, you know, it's unconscious. It's a very, very different sport. Wrestling, it's much, e it's a, you score as many points as possible with doing the least damage as possible. In well, MMA, I feel like it's, it's different. It's a shame that there's not more attention put on the professional like like at one point in time professional wrestling was actual wrestling yeah yeah it wasn't like wwe entertainment it was professional wrestling and it was yeah. done for po why can't they do that i know they tried to That's do that a, a few question. years back there was a, a an organization i think was it kevin jackson that was doing it yeah 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 he was doing something uh -huh. where he was doing a professional wrestling organization yeah. but it just didn't catch on for some reason but yet Golf is on TV. For sure. Baseball so, and all crazy. these things that are- Bags, bro. Yeah. Cornhole. I was watching the Cornhole Championships on really? ESPN the other day. I'm like, bro, this is wild. Like, Cornhole is on ESPN more often than wrestling. But isn't that just now because of there's no crowds and COVID and there's all the weirdness and there's a lot of shit that's on. Like, well, if you follow Sports <laughs> Center on yeah. Instagram, like, half the shit they do is, like, people in their backyard, like, doing yeah. crazy dunks and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think the, the invention of the internet has definitely changed the game for our sport. We are in an epic time where anyone can be famous. All you need is an iPhone, yeah. cell phone, period. Like, if you can film footage and upload it and it's funny, it's inventive, it's disruptive, like, you have an audience and people are going to follow it. So people that are going viral now and becoming superstars aren't even the most particularly talented people in society, they just have a niche and yeah. they know how to stay consistent with it. Well, sometimes it doesn't even make sense. Like <laughs> something just catches. Like remember the dude that was on the skateboard uh, doing with Fleetwood the Mac cranberry juice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just for whatever reason, everybody's like, "That guy looks like he's having Get fun." Get this man a truck. Get him more cranberry juice. And, and now he's on. I look. He's always on podcasts. He's all over the place. He's a man. He bought a house. He bought a car. I mean. It's really incredible. But that's the beauty of it. Yeah. That's the beauty of it is it gives people an opportunity. There it is right there. Yeah. So it was, it was professional wrestling league that they established. And, you know, when people reference what we do, I call it Olympic wrestling. Honestly, I don't even call it professional wrestling because that is kind of an ode to the WWE and old time WWF. So it's a, it's a unique thing that we had at this time. This is Tommy Rollins, Daniel Cormier, both extremely competitive, both, uh, Great wrestlers, Oklahoma what year State, is Ohio this? State. This probably was around 04, 05 ish. Mm. Um, so I was still in high school. Real pro wrestling, that's right. So they had different cities across the country that had their own teams. It was almost like XFL esque. It kind of had that vibe. And you so had, it's Rulon Gardner. Yeah, Rulon and, Gardner. And who's the. Tim Johnson in the middle. He works for the Big Ten Network and also for ESPN. He does commentary for the uh, NCAA championships yearly. And then the last guy is Nate Carr, who was a NCAA champ, world medalist. And Rulon is another guy that made the transition. He made the transition to MMA. Did he? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He fought a bunch of times over in Japan. And actually, That's crazy. I think what stopped him was he lost a toe in a frostbite right. accident. He's a former Cornhusker. 
Is so he? we went to the same university, and I got a chance to kind of spend some time with Rulon, but he was out when I was kind of transitioning in. Oh. And so he's an interesting cat, and he is one of those guys that's, like, shrouded in this mystery, but there's so many, like epic stories about who he was what he's done how much he's eaten he's you know, a gorilla it, dude massive real massive life, man the size of that guy massive man um and then obviously him beating Corellan, which is pretty yeah. much considered the most legendary victory in wrestling history Does, that's a weird victory right because it's like Corellan, all he did was get Corellan to break his grip yeah and it was a new rule right yep. the rules are evolving all the time in wrestling so it's uh one of those rule changes that year in particular, which wasn't, it didn't translate well to the average fan. Mm. So like the toughest thing about wrestling is that the rules change so often that a non-traditional wrestling fan can't really keep up. You watch a football game, you know, listen, you put the ball into the end zone, it's six points, extra point, a point, field goal, three points, right? Safety two. You watch basketball, you know, if you're behind this arc, it's three points. If you're within it, it's two points. In wrestling, there's so many different subjective rule sets that you're like okay well mm. if you unlock your hands here or if this guy gets pushed out of bounds it's a point but if you shove him out of bounds it's no points if he's grounded it's no points but if his knees off the mat then it's a point so there's so many different like little nuances in the sport that make it difficult to follow and even if you're within it like sometimes you have to address what the rule set is before you even compete in a tournament there are times where we're meeting with uh, administration and referees before we compete at the olympics world championships just so we can stay current on the rule set wow. for that year because yeah, it's just that much always evolving always evolving that is that something that plays in your head while you're actually competing do you do you have to think like oh wait a minute what is what's the rule for this place you know that's a good question i think in the heat of the moment sometimes and I, I imagine you've seen it a lot in mma whether it's a guy you know hitting someone in the back of the head or mm -hmm. you know kicking them when they're down on a knee like all these little things that when you're in the battle and you're fired up and you're trying to put this man out like, you don't even think about the rule set. You just, you know, it has to be programmed. I think mm. experience, just uh, multiple times within this position, there's a certain level of savviness and mental toughness that you have to have to get there. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free, only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.